When it comes to seed saving from the garden, we have three methods to do so. The first one is actually just removing seeds from a flower. So in the case of a marigold or a cosmo or chamomile, we just remove the dried seeds from the flower and put them into a baggie. The second way is just removing the seeds from the fruit. So things like peppers or squash or watermelon are all seeds that don't have a gelatinous coating, are very easily separated from the pulp of the plant, and therefore don't need any other processing to make them work in your garden next year. The third fruit is actually probably the most intimidating, and that is things like tomatoes and cucumbers. Tomatoes and cucumbers have a gel, and this gel is considered a seed inhibitor. So the question is, do you need to ferment these seeds to remove that seed inhibitor, or is the drying process just in general on a paper towel enough to remove that seed inhibitor and ultimately get you to the place you need to be? The answer to this actually may shock you. The fermentation process is something that is listed in online forums all the way to YouTube videos. So I'm not gonna go into that too, too much. Simply all you're doing is finding the gnarliest looking vegetable you can find. If it's a cucumber, big and yellow, mushy, ideally. And then for a tomato, you want overripe, moldy, basically falling apart on the vine. These are the candidates that you want to select for your seed saving process. From there, you're just going to take the pulp, put it in a mason jar, put some extra water in if you need to because you want the seeds fully submerged. You just let that sit until you get a nice volume of mold on top. The number of days doesn't matter as much so long as it's over three days total. Some people say you have to wait till it looks like this, looks like that. It's just three plus days ideally. So if you get busy and they end up sitting for 14 days, it's not a big deal. You can still use those seeds. From there, you're going to rinse said seeds off the purpose of rinsing is just to remove that excess mold and the additional pulp that's just kind of floating in that mixture. Place it on a paper towel or a parchment paper if you don't want it to stick to the paper towel. And then once it's completely dried, bone dried, and that's the case with any seed saving, you can then put it into a manila envelope and save it for next year. When it comes to saving seeds from a plant or a fruit that has that gelatinous coating or excess pulp, you can get away with not fermenting. I know, contrary, contrary to popular belief, it is possible. I would save more seeds from that crop because your germination rates will decrease. The purpose of that gelatinous coating is to actually prevent germination within the tomato or inside of that cucumber. If we think about a tomato and cucumber compared to something like a pepper or a spaghetti squash, we immediately see that that environment is incredibly moist and sometimes warm depending on the environment conditions. And therefore we can, it makes sense why a plant would develop a gelatinous seed inhibitor coating for its seeds because the environment with inside that fruit is ideal for germination. So that is why that seed inhibitor exists. However, if we were to simply dry this out on a paper towel, just by rubbing the seeds off with a paper towel, we can separate the pulp manually and as well as get some of that seed inhibitor off. The seed inhibitor, when it's re-soaked on the seed, doesn't jelly up again. It is just kind of just disappeared. And one way we can increase germination on a seed that hasn't been fermented is using a piece of sandpaper or just our fingers to rub it to be able to allow water to penetrate the outside seed layer and ultimately get to the inner parts, if you will, to help with the germination process. So you don't have to ferment cucumbers or tomato seeds. It's not necessary. You do need to still wipe them off and remove as much pulp as possible because that pulp, regardless of how hard you try, will contain some moisture and ultimately cause rotting within your manila envelope or seed collector area. Particularly true if you're using photo album books or if you're using like a Rubbermaid container or those fish tackle box things that will cause mold. That is one of the reasons why we ferment. Now, I'm not saying you should not ferment. I would encourage you to try to learn how to ferment. And the reason for that is because the removal of that seed inhibitor, while that is part of the reason why we ferment the seeds, the other reasons why we ferment the seeds is actually to remove that excess pulp to help with 
seed storage and allow for longer seed storage, as well as removal of disease. Now there are a number of diseases out there that can be inherent on the seeds themselves, anywhere from bacterial infections to fungal infections, you name it. And so the fermenting of your seed actually removes this. It's very similar to the video that I did on using urine as a fertilizer in the garden. If you use urine as fertilizer in the garden, you wanna make sure you ferment it before applying. This is to remove the bacteria in said urine that can ultimately harm you as well as harm your plants. So the answer to this question of whether or not you need to ferment is no, you don't have to ferment, but you can expect lower levels of germination as well as potential disease in the future. So should you ferment, Yes, <laughs> in an ideal world, you would be fermenting and don't get intimidated by this. It is simply pulp squeezed in mason jar, little bit of water, doesn't matter what kind of water it is. Let it sit for a minimum of three days. If you let it sit longer, that is completely fine. Put it in a strainer, rinse it off, let the seeds dry for approximately a week. We want these seeds bone freaking dry and you're off to the races. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys next time.